If you're struggling to write amazing prompts for your AI agents, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to use meta prompting to create detailed, clear instructions for your agents so that they have the conversational experience that you're looking for. Now, if you're not familiar with meta prompting, I released a video about it that you guys seem to like quite a bit a few weeks ago, and I'll be building on what I taught there. The real key within your agentic prompts to work exactly the way you intend them to is to give them enough examples of what a perfect user interaction might look like. Similar to how providing multiple examples to a large language model helps it better understand and do that monkey see monkey do, creating example conversational experiences or conversation designs and feeding it to a large language model really helps to understand what kind of experience you're looking for. I'm gonna show you an example of a prompt that I put together that we can use as our foundation to build whatever agentic prompt you're looking for. All right, enough talking again, we'll jump right in. So with the help of meta prompting, I put together this prompt right here, which you'll see is around three pages long. And obviously I practiced my own advice and I used GPT for almost 80% of building this prompt. It was more so testing back and forth and giving GPT feedback on how to refine the prompt that got me to this end state. So if we look here, pretty much we have this structured by providing it with a profile. And here I'm referring the prompt to a file.txt. I just put this in there as a form of template because nine times out of 10, if you're actually putting together some form of AI agent, whether it's in a low code tool like VoiceFlow or something more bespoke like Crew AI, there's some form of knowledge base you're typically referencing. So this is my little variable that you can use to adapt to your use case or the name of your files that you want your application or agent to refer to. So for this prompt, I'm just giving it the assumption that it's an expert at Canadian tourism and it's basically a all-in-one travel guide. So that's the main rule here. And in terms of how I like to structure the different responsibilities when it comes to building agentic conversational prompts, I give it a series of responsibilities. So in this case, I'm saying that first you want to re request a lot of clarifications. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but pretty much the TLDR is when a user initiates the conversation, it tries to prevent the user from being too vague so it can make sure that it can actually help them. Now this portion here is a piece that I love to add to these prompts because I'm basically giving one agent multiple identities or responsibilities all in one. So in this case, when I say establish agentic roles or agent roles, I'm basically saying that you have three main areas of expertise. One, you're an amazing travel guide. Two, you're a travel advisor in the sense that you provide multiple recommendations. And three, you're a cultural expert. So you understand the nuances and you try to provide advice on local customs where it makes sense. So in that same vein, in your application, in your use case, there are probably different domains of expertise that you need your agent to be an expert in. Now, when we go below, the next part is activate collaborative problem solving. So this again is referencing those domains of expertise and how they are used as personas to help the user get to their end goal. So for guide, it's describe the top attractions in a specified reason. For travel advisor, it's more so on the recommendation again. And for the cultural expert, when appropriate, highlight the unique cultural experiences and local customs. So the next one is really where you start to manufacture this conversational experience that feels more bespoke and more tailored to the user. So when I say capture user feedback, I'm basically providing it with a few boilerplate examples of how it might respond to make sure that the user is happy with the conversation and has the opportunity to give feedback to the AI agent on how it's doing. This is super important because if you have a very rigid prompt, that always has certain inputs and outputs, you won't get that conversational experience that takes a conversation from decent to fantastic. Now, the last section I like to put together is called tie it together, where I pretty much just summarize all the elements I've mentioned already thus far to synthesize it into one main block that can quickly scan whenever it's having that conversation with the end user. Now, there's two more sections that I put together here. One are basically tips and tricks for a better user experience. I noticed that when I give an agent, especially when I'm using a higher level large language model like a GPT-4 Omni or more recently a 3.5 Sonnet from Anthropic, I like to give it a few tips as if you're going on stage and you're about to do a huge presentation and someone's right behind the stage behind the curtain telling you, hey, I think you should do X, Y, and Z right before you go on stage. Obviously, that advice you're going to listen to and probably retain the most right when you go on stage. So I try to emulate that exact same analogy within the prompt here to give the agent some tips 
on how it should handle the nuance in the conversation. I won't go through all of them, but one example that I tend to put in is personalize your responses based on the user's interests and feedback to make the information more relevant and engaging. This is really to avoid monotonous, boring conversation and try to create a feedback loop where the user actually feels like the agent is actually adapting to their style or utterances in real time. Now, the last part, and what I alluded to at the beginning of this video, was actually putting example interactions. Now, again, if you watch my video on meta prompting, I'll give you a quick rundown right now. You can basically just go into ChatGPT, say you are a prompt engineer, and tell it, hey, assume that you are an agent that specializes in this. Can you create a sample conversation of what an ideal conversation might look like based on this criteria? So this is how you can start to manufacture example interactions that you then feed into another prompt here as model examples for how this agent should interact. So you'll notice here that as the conversation is progressing, it's being very detailed, it's being very helpful. Make sure that the LM doesn't stick to this like a carbon copy, but it has a direct source of inspiration along with the tips and tricks and along with its core understanding of its responsibility. Now, if you want to build more advanced AI agents that can actually do things such as function calling, or invoking APIs, I would also add a portion where you specify the roles and responsibilities and when those functions or APIs should be invoked to do XYZ thing. If your agent is purely just handling a conversational experience with a knowledge base, this is probably all you need to repurpose. Now we're gonna go through an example I prepared on how to actually use this and repurpose it for a completely different use case. And you'll see how little effort you need to do to actually adapt this prompt to all kinds of use cases. Now, if we go to my sample agents document, you'll see I've prepared three separate agents that we're gonna to try to emulate a prompt for using that prompt that I just showed you that you can find a link for in the description below to use as your base. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to literally just copy this entire prompt and then we're gonna go into ChatGPT. Now, as an extra Easter egg today, I'm gonna to show you a little trick on how I even avoid typing into ChatGPT and just using my voice to write prompts with ChatGPT. So if you look at my screen here at the bottom right, you're gonna see this microphone. When I click this microphone, I'll be actually able to speak and it'll turn speech to text directly within my browser instead of me having to actually type things out. I love taking laziness to the next level every single video. So if we just click on this, you are a prompt engineer. You're very talented at creating succinct and detailed prompts. I'm gonna provide you with an example prompt that I'm creating for my AI agent. I want you to emulate it for my exact use case that I'm gonna put at the very bottom of this prompt. And I want you to make sure that you output it in Markdown within a code block. All I have to do is click now. Oop, just gotta remove that part. There we go. And if you're curious how I'm actually using this, basically I'm just using this Chrome extension called Voice Control for ChatGPT. If you just put this into Google, Voice Control for ChatGPT. Chrome extension. You should be able to find it here. Voice control chat. There we go. And then just click on get free Chrome extension. It'll take it to the store and add it and you can literally use it for free. Okay, back to our session here. So I'm going to create a colon. I'm going to put our handy dandy prompt in quotes. And at the very bottom, I'm going to say, please adapt my prompt for this exact use case. And go back to sample agents. I'll take the first one and then we'll paste it here. And then we'll just set it and let it do its thing. All right, so you'll see here, it put together an entire prompt tailored for that use case. And just to see it a bit better, I'm gonna copy it and we'll pull it into the sheet here at the very bottom. And there we go. So we have the rule content captain. This is being tailored for our use case. So it says you are an expert in crafting engaging content, specializing in creating high quality posts and captions for various platforms, yada, yada, yada. We have the responsibilities are all broken down. Again, fully tailored for this use case with no intervention from yourself other than just telling it what the use case is. So you'll see here, it's done the same thing. It's created three separate roles for this one where it's now a content strategist, a copywriter, and a visual designer. And as you go down here, we have the exact same structure, but all of it is perfectly tailored for our use case. Now, once you've actually started the process of putting this together and you already have the context of your ask within the chat, all you have to do is, is just say, create another prompt for this case as well, and then paste it. 
and then it'll do its thing again in the exact same structure. And while this is loading, I can just go and already put the next one on my clipboard and get that ready to go. Copy it. And I'll already paste it here. Do it for this one as well. And then paste it. And then you just have to submit the last one. And we will have created three very detailed, bespoke, agentic prompts in under a few minutes. The real key with meta prompting is that once you've created one solid prompt, irrespective of whether it's a content generation prompt, an agentic prompt, or a phone agent prompt, one example is good enough to be reused over and over and tailored to different use cases. The most important thing is that you just test one very thoroughly over and over again, to make sure that it's giving you the experience that you're expecting and looking for. Once you have that ideal template, you can just use meta prompting to reuse that template over and over again. This is especially helpful if you start to build what's called an AI swarm, where you basically have many agents that all do different things and all have different specialities. All you have to do is write one perfect structure for an AI agent, and then you can distribute that for different roles, tasks, and responsibilities that this swarm might have. If this video is helpful, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you want to see more meta prompting content just like this. Thanks.